In August 2017, we got something a little interesting in the Android space. We got a phone from the father of Android himself, Andy Rubin. And uh, it looked a little something like this. Oh, ooh, it's, it's smudgy. Ugh. It looked a little something like this. This is the Essential PH1, and it is five years old now. But if you have one, or are looking into getting one, is it still a good phone in 2022? Can you still get by using this phone? I think today we're going to spend a little bit of time with this phone and find out. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a 2017 smartphone and it has 2017 specs. On the front, we're looking at a 5.71 inch, 2570 by 1312 IPS display. It's 60 Hertz, 120 Hertz and phone hadn't come around yet. That would have been later 2017 with, I believe the Razer phone was the first one to do that. And again, 2017, top of the line chip was the Snapdragon 835. Man, I'm old. I've been doing this for a while. Yeah, four whole gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. No expansion, just that's it. Internal only. Battery on it is 3,040 milliamp hours, which at the, you know today seems kind of small. We're used to like 4,500, 5,000, you know, big bigger battery. But back in the day, this was not huge, but it wasn't minuscule. And then the construction of the phone is something I don't think we've seen since, or at least in, in this combination. The front of the phone is of course, as always, glass. The sides of the phone are titanium and the rear of this phone is ceramic. For those of you that watch Jerry Rig Everything and you know, you know glass is glass and glass breaks, ceramic is ceramic and ceramic doesn't scratch. Like you need something really hard to scratch ceramic. And I think even after five years and all of my fingerprints all over it because ceramic is shiny and catches every last piece of dust and oil and just look at this. This is immaculate. After five years of going in and out of pockets, getting dropped, getting thrown across tables, immaculate. There's like maybe two or three scratches on this. I want you to show me a phone from 2017 that has been used for five years that has this level of cleanliness on the back. And because of the titanium and ceramic, it is a dense, phone. It is, it feels like a, a phone that's a whole inch bigger. It's about as heavy as I remember my 12 Pro Max being. It shipped with Android 7.1 and it natively supports up to Android 10. But you can, at least at the moment I'm recording this, patch it up to Android 12. My second one over here, my, my green skinned one, is actually running Lineage OS 18.1. So that's a fork of Android 11. You have a rear mounted fingerprint reader, which is, I mean, it's not the quickest, but it's definitely not slow. It's comfortable, it's right where it belongs, right in the middle. Now staying on the back, we have a flash, two cameras. They're both 13 megapixels and really one of them is only useful because one's your standard RGB, wide angle, whatever. This one is monochrome. It shoots exclusively in black and white. You know, like the feature you can put on photos after you take them in the photo app. That's what this one's for. It's just black and white. We have our little microphone in the middle, and then we have these two little receptacles for some pogo pins on some accessories that they were planning on making. And one that they actually did make is uh, right here. The uh, 4K 360 camera, it just kind of clips onto the back. It's got a little fan in there. So the experience using this phone is nice. It's really great. I may be a little biased because this was my first modern, real Android phone back in 2020 when I decided to dip my toes in. Um, not, not this one, this one actually was. And then I kind of bricked it and then unbricked it and then had to buy a second one because I bricked this one. But maybe I'm biased because this was my first real Android phone. But I really like it. It's pretty snappy still. It's pretty smooth. Sure, it, you know, there's hiccups here and there and battery life isn't great because it's five years old and it's a five-year-old chipset. It's not as efficient, not as powerful. I'm sure the cameras aren't super great, but for what you need it for, browsing the web, watching video, playing a couple games here and there, it's not bad. A few things that I figured I might want to point out is um, this phone does have NFC, but the reader is down here at the bottom. Jesus Christ, this thing catches every fingerprint. God, 
God damn. Is it better if I switch to the skin one? That's a little better. The NFC is down here. You know, for like contactless payment or whatever you do with NFC. Normally it's somewhere at the top or like in the middle. Nope, it's down here. It's all the way at the bottom. It's not like a deal breaker or anything. It's just, just kind of weird. And there's no like tap to wake or raise to wake, but there is um, a sharply move in any direction to wake the screen feature, which is a little weird and honestly kind of annoying. I'd rather it just doesn't do anything. It's just a little odd. Um, one, of the, one of the quirks of this phone, I guess. Now you might be thinking, well, this phone was made by Andy Rubin, like the father of Android. He made Android. Why, why don't I really know about this phone? Like, why didn't this phone succeed? Well, it came out in 2017 at a price of, I want to say like 700 or $750. Today, we kind of look at that like, oh yeah, that's a mid-range flagship. No, that was a lot of money, but it's still a lot of money now. But back then that was, your phone had to do something crazy to justify seven, 800 bucks. Now, keep in mind, this is 2017. This hadn't come out yet. The iPhone 10, you know, the first mainstream popular phone to sit at the thousand dollar price point. I know the Note 8 came out before it, but like how many notes did they sell that year? Probably not a lot. But this, this wasn't out yet. This was still a good four months from being in public hands. 750, 800 bucks was steep. And then I think within the first year, they dropped it down to like 400 and still very few people bought it because it was just like unknown. No one really knew about it. And then uh, in 2020, coincidentally, the day after I placed my eBay order for my first Essential phone, Essential went under. Now, I don't want to say I did that, but so yeah, it, it was a really interesting phone from a really interesting company that just kind of came out of nowhere. It's an interesting phone from an interesting company that has a lot of interesting background to it. If you know Andy Rubin, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But today, five years later, none of that really matters anymore. Is it good? Like, should you consider buying one? Probably. I mean, it is it is a damn near bulletproof phone. I've dropped both of these, thrown them across my desk, rubbed up against other phones. Like it's ceramic and titanium's a killer combo for durability. And these things are like really cheap on eBay. I think I bought my first one for like 56 bucks, 50 something bucks. And I bought this one for like 40. So I guess like they kind of hold their value pretty well, but they're not expensive phones and they are really good for the price. So if you're looking into getting one, I'd, I'd say, yeah, I'd like at least, at least try it. It's not going to be the end all be all. It's not the greatest phone ever. And I feel personally, you're still getting a lot more than $50 out of this. Again, I could just be biased because this was my first Android phone, but like, but it's a solid package, even five years later. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts on the Essential Phone are or were. Did you have one? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.